Hey there, I'm Ellie Cat, and today and over the next few days, we're going to be talking about a mineral's hardness. In other words, is a mineral easier or harder to scratch? Mohs hardness is a rough measurement of the resistance of a mineral's surface to be scratched by a substance of a defined hardness. Mohs hardness scale goes from 1 to 10, for 1 being the softest mineral most easily to scratch talc, to the hardest mineral that scratches everything, a diamond. And you may be wondering, well, how can I scratch a rock? Believe it or not, you have a lot of stuff lying around your house you can use. One of them being your fingernails. They're about a 2.5. The next one being a penny. It's about a 3.5. The next one after that would be a pocket knife. It's about a 5.5. And after that would be a nail. It's about a 6.5. A geologist uses a scratching tool, which is about a 6.5. I challenge you to go find things and scratch rocks. And this is part one of how hard is it? Now this is talc. This is number one on Moe's hardness scale. These are from my personal collection. They were found in the White Mountains of Nevada while I was working there. Talc being number one makes it the softest mineral known. It forms in a variety of colors from white, green, darker green, colorless, brown, and even gray. It has a massive form and has a pearly luster. It feels a little bit like a bar of soap and it's extremely easy to scratch. Talc is used in a variety of industries, including making paper, plastic, rubber, food, pharmaceuticals, and very commonly, cosmetics. You should totally see what you have in your house that has talc in it. And the next time you're baking, think about how much science went into that. And geology. Part two of how hard is it? This is gypsum, number two on Mohs hardness scale. It's a hydrous calcium sulfate. It has a vitreous luster. It forms in colors white and clear. It cleaves only along one plane and it's extremely easy to scratch. Gypsum is used in quite a few industries. It's most common being drywall, plaster of Paris, joint compound, a hardening agent in cement, and soil treatment. Gypsum forms in many varieties, from the plated crystal we saw, to the double terminated desert crystal, like this guy, or even as a desert rose. So if you live in a conventional house, you are surrounded by gypsum because you're surrounded by drywall. And one last word, Gypsum's not harmful to pets. This is part three of how hard is it? This is calcite, a calcium carbonate mineral, and number three on Mohs hardness scale. It has a vitreous to pearly luster. It forms in nearly every crystal habit. Houndstooth, massive, and that beautiful rhombohedral cleavage we all love. And it effervesces with HCl. This is one of the most ubiquitous minerals for rock forming in sedimentary, metamorphic, and even igneous, and can be found in hydrothermal environments as well. Calcite forms in nearly every color imaginable, and it is the most widely used mineral in construction, abrasives, pharmaceuticals, agriculture, soil treatment, you name it. I bet you didn't know that you use calcite every single day. It's in your toothpaste. Welcome back to part four of how hard is it? Fluorite, or calcium fluoride, has an isometric cubic habit, an adult of vitreous luster, and it cleaves perfectly in four directions. You get the picture. Fluorite forms in many colors, including purple, green, colorless, and the most rare being blue and yellow. It's the perfect mermaid mineral. Fluorite is a source of fluorine and hydrofluoric acid, and its metallurgical properties make it very useful in chemical industries. And very high clarity pieces can even be used for making lenses from microscopes, telescopes, and even cameras. One of the coolest things about fluorite is how it fluoresces under black light. If you have a black light, you should see what minerals you have that fluoresce. Welcome back to part five of how hard is it? No, no one, just, just me. We're talking about the mineral apatite today. It's these guys. It's part of a phosphate mineral group. Apatite is mainly used as an index mineral on Mohs hardness scale. But in case you didn't know, all of the minerals on Mohs hardness scales are considered index minerals. Apatite has many crystal habits. My favorite being prismatic crystals. It forms in many colors, including green, brown, violet, pink, yellow, and colorless. Apatite is sometimes used as a gemstone, but it's more commonly used in manufacturing fertilizer. Yes, it's a great source of phosphorus for our plants. Did you know that once upon a time, somebody thought it would be a good idea to put apatite in toothpaste? Mm, our teeth are made of apatite, so it was scratching our teeth. Bad news. Part six of how hard is it? 
Today we're talking about feldspar, number six on Mohs hardness scale. There are two group types of feldspar, potassium feldspar or plagioclase, or K-spar and plage. Feldspar can be crystalline or massive and fractures along cleavage planes. It forms in colors white, pink, gray, and sometimes blue. Feldspar is used in both making glass and ceramics and is the most abundant mineral in Earth's crust, making up over 50% of it, and it eventually weathers out into clays. And did you know that feldspar is also found on the moon? You could basically say they're space rocks. Sort of. Welcome back to part seven of How Hard Is It? This is quartz, number seven on Mohs hardness scale. Quartz forms beautiful six-sided terminated prismatic crystals to massive blocks of beauty. Quartz is colorless all the way to black. Quartz can scratch a steel butter knife. Quartz is the second most abundant mineral in the Earth's crust to feldspar. Quartz sand is the primary ingredient for manufacturing glass. Quartz is present in and very important in the three main types of bedrock, metamorphic, sedimentary, and igneous. Part eight of how hard is it? This is topaz, number eight on Mohs hardness scale. This can be scratched by tungsten carbide. Topaz is the birthstone of November. It forms in every color imaginable and has a beautiful crystal habit. This is the best topaz I've ever found. Topaz's most common use is a gemstone in jewelry, but because of topaz's particular hardness, topaz has an increased capacity to break easily, so it needs to be used on jewelry that's not gonna get knocked around too much. Topaz and quartz can often be confused as the same mineral. They're very close in habit and luster. However, topaz can scratch quartz. It is also cool to the touch and can be electrified easily. Welcome back to part nine of how hard is it? This is my favorite one. Corundum is number nine on Mohs hardness scale. It's an aluminum oxide. The mineral corundum is best known for its gem varieties, ruby and sapphire. The composition is the same, the colors are just different. Ruby being the red version, and sapphire being every other color, including the iconic blue. Corundum is also used as an abrasive for grinding optical glass and polishing metal. One of the most rare and beautiful and second most expensive gemstone is the Pad Paradasha Sapphire. It's a beautiful mix of yellow and pink. I'd take one of those babies over a diamond any day. They often use sapphire on watch faces so that it doesn't scratch easily. Welcome back to part 10 of How Hard Is It? I'm talking about diamonds at number 10 on Moe's hardness scale and a girl's best friend. Nah. Diamonds are the hardest known naturally occurring mineral. Diamonds are known for their gemstone qualities, and they have a waxy to vitreous luster, and they form in a variety of colors. Used industrially as abrasives, diamond dust can cut almost anything. Diamonds were once carbon that was put under a lot of pressure in kimberlite tubes. Diamonds are not forever. In fact, they're slowly turning back into carbon, the same stuff your pencil lid is made out of, graphite. Diamond inclusions are in fact pieces of carbon that weren't fully formed into a diamond. In fact, diamonds aren't rare at all. They're quite common. They're overpriced and way hyped up by the media. Although beautiful, rubies and sapphires are far more rare. We got through all 10 of Mo's hardness scale. Please share this video if you liked it. Give me a follow. 